Sharon Treat, and I am a senior advisor to the Institute for Agriculture and Trade Policy, IATP. IATP is a social justice organization that works on um, trade policy related to food, agriculture, climate change, sustainability, uh, and rural communities. And I recently uh, completed a report for IATP on the impact of the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, or TTIP, as proposed. And we have also looked at CETA, the Canadian Agreement, which is up for consideration by each of the national parliaments of the European Union member states. So it's a very timely report that looks at what the impact of these um, proposals are on food and agriculture. And what we concluded is that both agreements will strongly promote the most intensified industrial agriculture, uh, particularly in the meat sector, and lead to a lowering of food safety and other standards that are very important to people in Italy and the rest of the European Union, including pressure to accept um, gen genetically modified um, foods, um, pressure to uh, accept uh, meats uh, that are treated with um, chlorine and other washes instead of sanitary conditions from farm to fork, which is the European approach and standard, and pressure to um, delete, to reduce the impact of the precautionary principle, not by repealing it outright, but by creating a so-called living agreement that will result in regulatory cooperation discussions um, long into the future without having the transparency that we normally associate with a more democratic process uh, and that will put um, trade uh, considerations and impacts on business as a higher level of consideration than the impacts on consumers and what consumer desires um, might be. So the report that we um, did, here is um, a copy of it here, um, that uh, is available on the IATP website. We also did um, this report on CETA. And I think one thing that's really important to understand is that um, the Canadian system of uh, industrialized farming is very, very similar to that in the United States. So under CETA, you do not have necessarily a um, more positive uh, outcome because the Canadians have been just as forceful at challenging country of origin labeling, um, which they did um, for the United States. Uh, they have been also participants in challenges to um, the EU's um, um, standards on hormones in beef. Uh, and they have been very clear both in their private sector and their regulatory comments that they do not support the precautionary principle and that in fact um, these trade agreements for both uh, Canada and the United States are a way of um, chipping away at the precautionary principle and the controls over uh, chemicals and pesticides, uh, GMO and um, you know, ongoing um, food safety provisions that are popular in the European Union and are basically considered um, you know, the, the way that food should be handled. So, um, you know, and this is, as I said, both as a result of the regulatory cooperation um, provisions, but also there's provisions of both agreements relating to labeling, which will make it far more difficult to have uh, required labels um, and whether that's on um, ingredients or additives in junk food or whether it has to do with uh, future labels on animal welfare. Uh, or whether it has to do with labeling of um, packaging that might be um, around food and might have bisphenol A or other uh, chemicals in it that uh, affect people's health. So between the uh, labeling provisions, the regulatory cooperation, and also the reduction in tariffs, which will put these much more cheaply produced uh, factory farm um, uh, 
meats and other um, agricultural products in a much more um, competitive position um, versus the European um, farming and will really continue to drive uh, away from family farms towards the most industrialized um, agriculture. So I encourage you to take a look at our reports. They are on the IATP website, which is www.iatp.org.